everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting video tutorial. Today, we're going to be creating some folk art themed backgrounds three ways with brand new products from the Hero Arts April 2024 My Monthly Hero release. We're going to start with the color layering folk art stencils. And I want to create a background on black cardstock, craft cardstock and white cardstock to show the difference using the exact same colors of ink. First, I am going to show how when you stencil just directly with Distress Oxides on black cardstock, kind of how it is much more faded than what you get if you put down a base of white first. So I'm kind of starting in reverse order of I don't want to say easy to hard, but maybe untraditional to hard. So see how it's very light, and that is Lumberjack Plaid, which is a bold, beautiful red. So instead of stenciling directly on the black card stock with your Distress Oxide first, we're going to clean our stencil, grab some white pigment ink and a pouncer, and we're going to pounce on a layer of white pigment ink first, giving a beautiful white layer to that black cardstock background. Now this could really be done on any darker color of cardstock, including the craft. I didn't use it on the craft, but you could. Once we have a nice white layer, we are going to go ahead and go back to Lumberjack Plaid, and we're going to blend the ink right on top. This is going to make the color much more vibrant and I will hold up the examples next to each other so that you can see the difference. Now the example over to the left right now actually does have a lighter color of ink down with the Lumberjack plaid over the top, but I liked the white a little bit better, the white pigment ink as the base color better. So that's what I was doing I was trying out several different things to see what I liked and see how bold and vibrant that ends up being. So pretty. Plus, I kind of like how the tips of the design are a little white. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with stencil number two. The other colors of Distress Oxide ink I'm using today will be Rustic Wilderness and Fossilized Amber. And again, each layer on the black cardstock is going to have a white layer of pigment ink first to help the colored ink really pop against the dark background. The fun thing about this technique and these cards today is they are the exact same card simply with different colors of backgrounds, uh, background cardstock. And it changes the look so dramatically, which is really, really cool. Now, before I go and I add the color on top, I did find that I kind of like cleaning the stencil. I didn't do that on the red layer and that's okay, but it kind of will make your color maybe a little bolder. That's my thought anyway. So I use a little rubbing alcohol and a dry cloth to clean that really well, make sure it's dry before I place it back over the design. And now we're going to go in with some colors. And I did use multiple colors on the second and third stencils. So they will both feature either fossilized amber and rustic wilderness and just in different areas on those stencils, depending on what I am stenciling. And then up at the top, there's two little flowers and I want those to be yellow. Kind of my color palette today was that beautiful red and green and yellow. Look how beautiful. Okay, stencil number three. We're gonna line that up and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pounce on some white pigment ink first and then we're going to go ahead and go in with fossilized amber and Rustic Wilderness, and we're going to color in the different areas. Now, the third stencil, I did really um, use more of the Fossilized Amber in this one. You're going to see it in multiple places. And again, before I go and add the color, I wanna give that a good clean and make sure it's nice and dry and that both the front and the back of the stencil are completely clean before I go back over it. Now, this is 
only relevant if you're doing the white pigment ink first, which obviously I did for this background. On the other two backgrounds, I literally just, you're gonna see that here in a minute, I went back and forth um, stenciling. I didn't even clean my stencil because I wasn't adding the layer of white pigment ink. And I didn't want the white to kind of mute the colors, I guess is, is why I'm doing that. So here are all the areas I'm adding yellow first, that fossilized amber. Then we're gonna go in with Rustic Wilderness down the center area. And I did use a very heavy hand when applying the ink on all of my backgrounds today. When we peel that off, look at the gorgeous background we're left with. It is absolutely stunning and would be beautiful on its own with a simple greeting, a sentiment strip, maybe some, um, little jewels or something, so, so pretty. Okay, now that we have our black background, let's go ahead and do craft and white. Now, I didn't even clean this stencil. I just went straight in with it and added my entire layer of lumberjack plaid. I am going to fast forward a bit faster through this as we're just repeating the steps I just showed you on the black background minus the white pigment ink. I don't know about you guys, but anytime I can create multiple cards during one crafting session, I love it. But I often love to switch things up just a little bit, whether it's the colors or in this case backgrounds or maybe embellishments or greetings. It's a great way to end up with multiple cards while you already have all of the supplies out and are already making a mess basically. <laughs> so look at how different you can see we've got our black background, how the white background's looking, and then the craft background. What I love is that the backgrounds all give a completely different vibe, even though it's all the same steps. Now I will say on this craft background, I did not get the little flowers up at the top lined up correctly, and I did have to completely re-stencil this. And full disclosure, because I know you guys love hearing that I do stuff like this, I had all of my backgrounds beautifully stenciled and you're gonna see me go and add some text stamping over the background here in a little bit. And you guys, I was on the phone and I wasn't paying attention and you will probably guess what I did. I stamped the scripty text background upside down on every single one of these. So when you see this upside down, just know that all of these backgrounds had to be redone. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys, I was so mad at myself. It was so funny. Um, not really funny, but you know what I'm saying. It did give me a good opportunity, however, to realize that I didn't wanna use the white pigment ink on the background, and instead, when I redo them, I'm going to do them all with this Rustic Wilderness. And the Rustic Wilderness looks incredible on the black. In fact, I think it makes it so much better, the black and the craft, as well as the white but I really, really loved the look. So this is where I kind of saw that, how it was going to look, and I thought, I'm just going to, I did do um, second generation on the white background. So I left it in, you can see I'm stamping them all correctly now, but I thought you guys might think that was funny. So that happened, and now we are ready to move on to the next step. So the products we're using today from the April 2024 My Monthly Hero release, in my videos, I use the add-ons only, not the main kit or the premium kit. I used first those color layering folk art stencils, and now we are going to be using the Bird Family Fancy Die. I'm only using the large bird though, and I die cut it three times from Smooth White cardstock, and then I am coloring in the different areas of my birds with Olo markers. The colors of Olo markers I am using are listed on my blog post. You can find that link down in the description below, or you can find them in the description of this video um, for very easy reference. I love Olo markers and you can see how beautiful the color looks on here and it's very simple coloring. I am coloring right on my Glassboard Studio glass mat and with this mat, 
you can easily wipe away that extra ink. I use a little rubbing alcohol or you can use the little rubbing alcohol wipes, um, but it works fantastic. I'm cleaning in between each color. So you'll see me do all of the red and then like all of the green and all of the yellow. Between each color change, I do clean that so that I don't accidentally pick up any of that color off of my mat. This is one of the things that I love about using a glass mat for uh, coloring with alcohol ink markers like this when you're coloring the entire die cut is that the cleanup is so, so easy. Now, I do have a coupon code for Glassboard Studio to save 20%. So if you are looking for a glass mat, they have them in multiple sizes. They are fantastic. You can use my code right across the screen here. It is Nicole 20. I really love the white or a lighter color mat to work on as it shows you where you might have ink so that when you're going to clean up, you get it all cleaned. This is not a ton of blending today. It's pretty simple. It's basically two shades per color family. Most of the blending, I guess, if you wanna call it that, is on the larger images, which I'm laying down the light color first, and then I'm flicking or feathering in my darker color. I always love when Hero Arts does these really cool kind of folk arty type of dies. I love all of the Hero Arts fancy dies, which is something I probably say each and every month, but the detail on them is absolutely incredible and these are no different. Very fun and very easy. If you like to do coloring right on your die cuts like I'm doing here, as it's very easy to get that detail and see where to color, almost like a black outline from a stamped image. Now I'm not gonna overly blend any of these. You'll notice after I do the light base color, I'm just feathering or flicking in the darker color and I'm just letting it be the way it is. And I did all of mine assembly line style at once here. The other set is off camera. And again, once I have all my green, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my glass surface. The eye for my bird, this is uh, created with the black jelly roll pen. So it's kind of got a little bit of a raised glossy finish. A tiny black pearl would also be really amazing here. And when I'm completely done coloring in everything on my birds, I will take a fine tip black pen. There is like a little eyelash coming from our bird and we're going to draw that in just following the line of the die cut. I'm gonna need a little bit more, that was dry. Okay, now so for our yellows, we have the beak and our final flower. Again, I'm just keeping with the same color scheme all the way through. Leaving the base of the bird white really helps it show up on the black and craft backgrounds, which is what I wanted. On the white background, it tends to maybe even blend into it a little bit more, but I kind of like that effect as well. So I didn't change the base color for that particular card. You could, if you wanted to, maybe start with uh, craft even would be amazing. You could color just like I'm doing here on craft and that would look awesome. So once we have all of our coloring complete, it is going to be time to put our cards all together. We're going to be doing the same thing on each card. I will do one sped up, but not quite as fast. And then for the remaining cards, I will speed it up a little bit. What I like though, is with a busy background, like we created with the color layering folk art stencils, adding some dimension to what we're putting on top is going to help differentiate between the background and those embellishments. So I will be using foam adhesive. We're also going to use today the Folk Animals Bundle. This is a stamp set with coordinating dies. I'm not actually going to use the um, images, pardon me, from that 
today, but we will be using the greetings from this stamp set for our card, our cards. Here I'm placing my foam adhesive on the back of the bird and I'm going to place the bird first. And I'm going to grab one of those greetings because I want to make sure that I'm not completely covering up the little birds down along the bottom edge. So I'm gonna set my bird right above that greeting. We'll stamp those here in a minute. And then I'm not gonna press it down too hard yet. I want to lift up just a little bit and I have some liquid glue on the back of my green sprigs and tuck them underneath my bird. Then we're going to tuck the yellow flower along the left side and we're going to tuck our right flower over on the right side. Now, generally, I like to have stuff offset just a little bit, and you could die cut an additional flower if you wanted to, but I was trying to be careful about how much of the background I'm covering up. I really wanted that background to still kind of shine, if you will. So we're gonna go ahead and attach all of the rest of these images. Now, once we have everything attached to our card, we are going to use some Hero Hues enamel dots to embellish the flower centers for our die cuts, as well as add a few additional little enamel dots here and there. I'm using the color Translucent Sunset, and I think the colors just look gorgeous on here. This particular set of Hero Hues enamel dots I've used multiple times and it works so well for so many different color combinations. I really love it. We're gonna add these. I'm using a sharp kind of piercing tool is kind of how I pick them up off of the sheet and place them right where I want them to go. And again, we're going to do this on all three of our cards. Now, once we have all of our gems in place, we need to add our sentiments. For all three cards, I decided to stamp and emboss greetings from the Folk Animals stamp set right on black cardstock, stamped with embossing and watermark ink from Hero Arts and heat embossed with white embossing powder. I chose these sentiments in two reasons, I love the fonts and there are coordinating dies if you get the Folk Animals bundle. And I love that because there are coordinating dies for these greetings, I didn't have to, to um, cut them into sentiment strips or anything like that and I was easily able to die cut these greetings and attach them right below the bird so it kind of looks like the bird is sitting on top of the sentiment with the greenery and the florals kind of draping down framing up that greeting perfectly. I'm going to use both wishing you the best and thank you so much. Both greetings are super usable, really great, and you could create a very similar card with the same backgrounds using the Folk Animals Bundle as your animals instead of the fancy die cuts if you wanted to. I'm gonna sprinkle on all the white embossing powder. Now, one of the images, I noticed that there must have been some residue on my cardstock, so it was great that I stamped the greetings and it had four of them to choose from as one of them I ended up just pitching so I didn't have to restamp that at all. Now the coordinating dies die cut right around the greetings. They don't die cut them into sentiment strips. You totally could, but I love that it cuts nice and close so that again, we're retaining as much of the background as possible. And it really just blends and works with the design instead of taking away from it, if that makes sense. I'm really loving um, the sentiment sets that cut up right close to the greeting and kind of follow the shape of the greeting. And especially these sentiments that are a combination um, that have script and, you know, kind of a serif or sans serif, depending on what kind of greeting it is. It, I love it. I just think it looks really, really nice. I'm trimming some of my foam adhesive squares to fit my greetings. You can see I'm piecing some foam adhesive here on the back and when you pop that sentiment right underneath the bird and it looks like the bird's sitting on it instead of floating 
it grounds the whole design perfectly and looks absolutely amazing. I love how the subtle little bit of text in the background adds to the card and really kind of breaks up a lot of that white space without taking away from the folk art design of it all. And once we have our greetings in place, all we need to do is take each of these backgrounds and attach them to a white top fold card base to finish the design. And that is it, friends. Thank you so much for joining me today for these three cards featuring products from the Hero Arts April 2024 My Monthly Hero release. I hope you've enjoyed and been inspired by creating these same exact backgrounds on three different cardstock colors, and I can't wait to see if you do something similar with products you either have at home or products you pick up from the release. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube for your convenience. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new paper crafting video or I go live. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time.